Professor. This is what we've been searching for. It is very odd, Professor. Indeed it is. Let's find out how much it is. Pardon me. Uh, may I ask the price of this vase? Twenty-five dollars. We should purchase it. Uh, could you tell me where it came from, please? Yes. A sailor sold it to me about a year ago. Said he'd found it somewhere in the South Seas on an island where he'd been shipwrecked. Could you give me the gentleman's name and his present place of abode? I believe I have it here in my files. Thank you. This thing is very valuable. Without a question, Professor. There must be a mate to it somewhere if we can only locate it. Yes, Professor. Oh, here it is. Dick Nelson. Care of uh, Riley's Marine Cafe. On Wharf Street. Thank you very much, sir. Good day. Good day. Sign up a second mate with a first mate's ticket. Do you know of any man? So long, Sam. I think that's the man you want over there. Any mail, Riley? No, no mail. <laughs> Meet Mr. Martin. Dick Nelson. Hi, lad. Hi there, sir. I'm looking for a second mate with the first mate's ticket. Well, I have a paper here. Maybe that'll do. I don't know. Now, don't get restless. I'm lining up a ship that we can sail on. Oh, boy. Bull Dennis is there. Wait till Dick Nelson sees him. And there'll be plenty of fireworks. Yeah. The last time they fought in here, they nearly wrecked my place. They tangle again. The cops is liable to close my joint. This is a West India cruise. Six months. It pays $300. $300? Fine. I'm on. You see, my second mate hasn't shown up, and I've got to have someone to replace him. Oh, yes. Report on the Calla Lily, Pier 16. We'll be sailing in a half an hour. Okay. I'll be there. Thanks, Riley, for the job. You're sure welcome. I sure need it. <laughs> Say, if they clash, it'll be a fight to the finish this time. You said it. Yes. Dick, you better pack your sea gear, or you'll be late getting aboard ship. Guess you're right, Riley. And listen... You better go out the back way, too. The back way? Yes. All right. As you say. Ha, 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 Say, Bull. I always keep my promise. And so do I.
the matter with you? Uh, there's a crazy man in the saloon. He's tearing the joint up. inside. Come on. What's all the rumpus about? There ain't any rumpers. This is a quiet, respectable place. Yes, it looks like it. Where's the guy that tore up this joint? Say, hey, you cops give me a pain. Every time one of the boys want to have a little fun in here, you come in and spoil it. Listen, Riley. The next time this thing happens, I'm going to close up this joint. Get me? Yeah, yeah. I get you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> what, another pep rally? <laughs> Where did everybody go? They beat it. Gee, I better beat it upstairs and pack my sea gear. And never mind your sea gear. You've just got time enough to catch your ship. So long, Riley. So long. <laughs> uh -oh. Pardon me. Quite all right, I assure you, sir. We're seeking a parcel of information. We're endeavoring to ascertain the whereabouts of one Mr. Nelson. Mr. Dick Nelson. Oh, Mr. Nelson. Yes, sir. Why, he's the gentleman you just bumped into as you came in here. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. There he is. Hey, hey, just a minute, John Carlo. Uh... We mustn't let him get away, no. Professor. Come here, come here, come here. I'll give you fifty dollars to catch that fellow. Come on. Fifty bucks to catch him. Fifty bucks, come on.
Hey, you're Dick Nelson, aren't you? Yes. Please come up a moment. I, I want to talk to you. That's all right. It's quite all right, I can assure you, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Nelson, I'm Professor Sneed. How do you do? This is Professor Harris. How do you do? How do you do? I'm seeking a little information, sir. Mr. Nelson, did you sell a small vase about a year ago? I believe I did. Where did you get that vase? Oh, what difference does that make? You made me miss my ship. I'll be out six months' pay now. How much would that be? $300. All right, my boy, I'll double that. If you'll give me the information I'm seeking. Okay. Let's go to some quiet place and talk things over. Quite an agreeable suggestion, sir. Come, Let's come go on. Let's go on. Scram, okay. boys. Professor Sneed and his scientific companion intend to go on a cruise in search of an unknown island somewhere in the Pacific Ocean, where they hope to find the ruins of a lost civilization. Mr. Dick Nelson is guide and navigator. It is said he found an exceedingly valuable urn on the mysterious island where he was shipwrecked as a boy. The craft to be used is the Madge. Why, Dad, that's our ship. Yes, Madge. I signed the papers this morning. But why didn't you tell me about it before? Well, daughter, I... I didn't have the heart to tell you. Why not? Oh, I think it's wonderful for us to go on a mysterious voyage like that. Yes. That's the trouble. We're not going on this voyage together. What do you mean? We are not going. Well, well, Professor Sneed insists on signing the contract that no woman must be aboard. Why, I'm as good a sailor as any man. That's what I told the professor. But he said the voyage was too dangerous for a woman. And he refused to accept the responsibility. It was a case of agree or lose the charter. Well, I suppose it has to be. But anyway, I won't be all alone while you're gone with old Sam here. Sam's going along as ship's cook. Oh, must you have him too? I'm shipping a new crew, and I want one man at least that I can rely on. That's all right, Daddy. I must go and get my coat and cap time I was going. We sailed tonight with the tide. our best wine to my cabin. Yes, sir. Never mind that bag. Hurry up. Our passengers will soon be aboard. Yes, sir. I said drop that bag. Take this to the captain's cabin and don't stumble on the way. Did you hear me?
I found this chart of my father's only yesterday in an old sea chest. Now, Captain, you see that spot right there? Yes. That's where the island ought to be. Well, with a fair wind, we ought to make that in about three weeks. Come in. to a successful voyage. Excellent, excellent. <clears throat> Professor Sneed, you take cabin number two. Professor Harris, you take cabin number three. And Mr. Nelson, you take cabin number six for tonight. Yes, sir. I'll move you in the morning to a cabin near here. Quite all right, sir. I call from you, Captain, and good night, sir. Uh, good night, sir. Good night, sir. And pleasant dreams to you all. Thank you. Good night, sir. Good night. Hello, young man. Didn't know I was going to have a cabin maid. What is your name? Uh, my name's uh, John Nelson. John Nelson? That's funny. My name is Nelson, too. Dick Nelson. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. Yes, sir. What do you do on the ship? Oh, uh, I'm the, the steward. Steward, huh? I hope we see a lot of each other. <sighs> Come in. Here's your bag, mister. Thanks. <laughs> the captain, I bet, is a gay old bird. Look at here. Yeah. <laughs> well, I tell you, the girl on every port is right. Say, have it you? No, thanks. Good. Maybe you want a cigar. I knew it. Here you are. No, thanks, sir. Not just now. Oh, go on. They're real Havanas. Swell. Uh, but really, uh, I don't care for one just now. Thanks just the same. Say, look here, shipmate. You get me so refusing me my pet cigars. Well, all right. Come on, come on, smoke up, smoke up. They're fine. You'd like them. <laughs> That's funny. The first time I ever saw a sailor smoke it from the wrong end. Say, besides, you didn't bite off the tip. Why, it's a superstition with me, I guess. A habit. Say, hey, uh, which way do you like to sleep? Sleep? Yes. 
Yes, uh, in or out, you know. Oh, uh, makes no difference to me. Same here. Been on a ship long? <coughs> no, I just signed on this afternoon. Do you snore? I don't know. No, oh, I found out something about you anyway. What? That you're not married. Otherwise, your wife would have told you if you'd snore. Besides, I hate people that snore. Oh, me too, me too. Hey, you better get your clothes off and turn in. You don't look any too good. You feel better? Maybe it's something you ate. Yes. Maybe. Well, I guess I'm going to turn in. Hit the hake pretty heavy. I think I'll go out on deck for a little... Fresh air, huh? Yeah, do that. Might make me feel better. I'll let you know in the morning if you snored or not. My goodness, I don't hear a thing. But Sam, it's me. Who's me? Me and Sam. I'm talking to the ventilator. <laughs> My rabbit's foot dumb told me the very same thing. What you all doing on deck so early, honey child? I'll tell you later. How about some breakfast? Fixing it right now. How'd you all spend the night? Terrible. Cup of coffee. And Sam, I want plenty of toast. What's that? What's what? Who's talking? Why, uh, 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 uh that was me. You see, I studied ventriloquism uh, out of a book. Hey, uh, Sam, why don't you say something? Or am I talking to myself? I hear you, honey child, and I'll get your breakfast to you in three shakes of a lamb's tail. So you'll have me nutty in a minute. Yes, sir. Better get out of here before I start talking to myself. Yes, sir. Sam, oh, Sam, can you hear me? I sure does, honey child. I wanted to tell you, I can't go back to my cabin. There's another sailor in there. You better go back to your cabin. Your roommate's in your captain's mess, eating his breakfast now. You think it's all right for me to go back to my cabin? No, I shouldn't, honey child. It's an odd fellow you gave me as a cabin mate last night, Captain. Cabin mate? Yes, he says his name is John Nelson. Signed on the boat as a uh, steward, I believe. Hmm. Must be a mistake, I... I'm sorry. <laughs> I believe I scared the tar out of him, though. <laughs> Didn't turn it at all last night. How did you frighten him? Told him I couldn't stand for any snoring whatsoever. Well, I believe he snores all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind, Nelson. 
I'll have the cabin boy move yourself into number seven next to mine. That'll be all right, Captain. Thank you. You clumsy lout. Come in. Morning, sir. Mr. Nelson, this is Mr. Dennis, my first officer. This is a pleasure. Yes, pleasure. Lord. You'll excuse me, gentlemen. I'll go see if the professors are ready for breakfast. Pardon me, I forgot my fight. I believe we can settle this later. Yes, I'll settle it later. What is this, uh, something pertaining to the navigation? Oh, yes, yes, it's about uh, when we arrive at the uh, island. Oh, all right. Why did you do this? I couldn't stay away from you. I'm sorry, but I just couldn't help it. There, there. It's done now. Oh, I'm sorry, Daddy. I thought nobody would find out. I just wanted to be near you. Well, we'll have to figure out how to keep the rest from finding out. Oh, I'll do anything, Daddy. I'll even stay in the hold if you want me to. No, you stay right here. I'm changing Dick Nelson to quarters near my cabin. I'll have the cabin boy remove his things. Now remember, you stick close here. Oh, thanks, Daddy. And please don't be too angry with me. <laughs> I couldn't if I tried. Now, now remember, don't be seen by anybody on deck. I'll come in and see you when I can. This is going to be a pleasant voyage for me. For you? For me? Miss Madge, this old Sam with your breakfast. Is your breakfast, honey child? Who is this honey child? I mean, I mean. Uh, Just what do you mean? I mean, I mean, I mean, believe it or not, I sure is a sleepwalker. Yes, sir. I was both having the most wonderful uh, nightmares I ever had in all my life. Why am I? You're in cabin six. And now what about that honey child? That's what I want to know. What about that honey child? Well, there's no honey child in here. You can see for yourself. So you better go back to that nightmare of yours. Yeah, sir. Wait a minute. You better leave that breakfast here for that honey child. She might be back. Yeah, sir. I said the nightmarish dreams I ever had in my whole life. Yaza. Yaza the obvious dream.
Young man, come on out. Did you sleep in there all night? Yes, uh, no. I mean, I was just... That's all right, Miss Madge. I know all about it. You better sit down and have some breakfast, and we'll talk things over a little later. Thanks. All right. Come on, while it's hot. I bet you're hungry. Oh, boy. That fellow Dick Nelson is the only one we'll have to worry about. But I'll take care of him somehow. Now, punk, you listen to me. If you know what's good for you. Yes, sir. Snoop around in Dick Nelson's cabin. And bring me any information you can get hold of. Yes, sir. And do as I tell you. Or else. Yes, sir. And say, Jacquard, if you and the boys stick with me, we'll all be rich. We're with you, Bo. <laughs> It's all right, sir. Your daughter's told me everything, and you can trust me. Thanks, Mr. Nelson. But there's one thing I think uh, we ought to tell the professors. I guess you're right. Leave it to me, Captain. I tell them. Thanks again. I you appreciate it. You bet. You. Just think, we've been out two weeks, and it only seemed like two days to me. Where did you learn to flatter girls? Nowhere. I guess pretty speeches around in my family. Well, you certainly told a pretty speech to those professors when you told them there was a woman aboard and they didn't mind it. Oh, I know they wouldn't mind the moment they saw you. Now, don't you fellas worry. I've got my lines all set. Yeah, you've been giving us the same applesauce for two weeks. Why don't you show us some color? Keep your trap shut. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, why don't you spill it? Well, you get the chart? I didn't, sir. Well, why not? I didn't have a chance. You didn't have a chance? Why not? Because... Because I can't go through with this. Oh, you can't, huh? And I'm going to tell the captain that's what I am. Something wrong. I've done it. He threw a belaying pin and hit the boy on the head. Take him below or lock him up in the brig. And you take post as first officer in his place, Mr. Nelson. Yes, sir.
From the observation I just took, Captain, we ought to be very close to the island. I hope so. Mm-hmm. Oh, come quickly, Daddy. I've just sighted some birds. All right. All right. Come on, gentlemen. Let's go see. Very interesting. Oh, they're land birds of tropical variety. Oh, they never fly more than 50 miles away from their habitat. We must be near land, there's no question about it. The birds are the surest indication. All right, boys, get ready. I still have some excellent vintage to celebrate the event. Good. Well, let's go then. <laughs> Come on. Right on down to the cabin. Now, I'm going down the hole and get bull. When you see us coming, that's the signal. Hand over your vessel, Captain King. This is mutiny. That's what it is. And you better sign your ship over to us. You haven't got a chance.
Отдыхает! Well, boys, looks like we own this island from now on. Let's go inland and throw up a shelter. for no fooling, you miss your breakfast. Breakfast is being served in the diner. Rose for ham and eggs, bacon and eggs, hot cake, and good old, good old harmony. You know good old coffee. Everything is good to eat this morning. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Where are we? That's the most important thing that less I know of. <sighs> Must have faded. How stupid of me. I'll go down to shore and pick up some of the wreckage so we can make camp right here. And I'll climb that cliff and put up a signal. There's a possibility of a ship passing this way. That's right. <laughs> Very happy thought, Captain. <laughs> Look who's coming here. Oh, fresh oh, fruits. Oh, there you are. Oh, Coconut. Yeah, yeah, there you are. Yeah. Have one of those bananas, huh? Oh, here's the delicious fruit. I tasted it myself. Plenty of them here. There you are. Have a banana. Very delight. That was mighty good, Samuel. Your catch was very good today. Yes, sir. <laughs> Say, honey, suppose we take another look for the ruins. All right. We're going to do you all to get the ruins. You can't get nowhere after you find them. Well, Dad's up there fixing the signal. Surely some vessel will see it. How long before dinner, Sam? Won't be long. Won't be long, Mark Dick. All right, we'll be right back. We'll be back. Hurry back and I'll have you a nice, fresh fruit cocktail. <laughs> Cut open one of these coconuts. This looks very familiar. Look, Dick. That looks like the ruin. Sure enough. It's the entrance. From the looks of things, our sailing days are over. We're in the dough.
warmth around here, Samuel. Enjoying yourself? No, Professor. I'd rather be at home with my rabbit's foot and my die. <laughs> well, look, I shall do a little exploring, see if I can't have better success than Mr. Nelson. Uh, you can remain here. If it's all the same to you, Professor, I'll do a little exploring myself. Come on. <laughs> Gee, this is a weird place. It gives me the jitters. Oh, you needn't be afraid. There isn't anyone here. Doesn't this place make a scientific heart beat with joy? Yes, sir. Professor, I'm scared. There's ghosts here on here. Perish the thought, Samuel. Don't you realize it's the greatest archaeological discovery of the age? I know, Professor, but I sure hate to run on any on, 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 on any of them arch, 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 ghosts. <laughs> Don't be silly. A ghost cannot hurt you. Maybe they can, but they sure can make me hurt myself. <laughs> That's silly. You wish to come for me further? No, sir. I stay right here. Maybe. Remain here. My colleagues can only see this. <laughs> they shall. Poor Professor Harris. <laughs> How he would have enjoyed this. I'm sure this is the place that we found that vase. Let's go over and see if we can find that mate. Here it is. It's the mate, all right. Oh, it must be priceless. So the professor says. <laughs> we ought to believe him.
Take Nelson. Professor Sneed. Yes, Mr. Nelson? I believe this is the vase. That's it. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad you all hit it. Well, what's the matter? There's ghosts all over this place. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's it. That makes me very happy. I trust you had no trouble in securing it for me. Oh, no, none whatsoever. It's good. Did we? Not much. <laughs> Dick Nelson! Did the ship come in? They're slowing a boat now. Ship. I know you all the time. How did you know? My little rabbit's foot been tolling me. <laughs> <laughs> now we can go home, see? Oh, that's nice. Let's go. go. <laughs> you know, Captain, it's wonderful to realize the dream of my life has come to pass due solely to perseverance and hard work. Professor, I think it's due to luck. Just plain, honest to goodness luck. <laughs> luck nothing, gentlemen, cause I had the old brother rabbit's foot with me. <laughs> <laughs> Won't be long and we'll be home again. Professor Sneed says the treasure you found is worth at least half a million. Half a million? Why, the treasure I found is worth a million times more than that. In fact, it's priceless. Well, what is it? It's you. <laughs> <laughs>